Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on expanding broadband access in low-income communities. My name is Rebecca King, and I'm a policy associate with the National Housing Conference. I want to run through a few introductory comments and logistics, and then we'll dive into today's presentation. First, joining me today is Amber Petty with Everyone On. Amber Petty serves as Senior Manager for Everyone On, overseeing the development and implementation of national programs like the American Express Dollars and Cents Pilot, the Best Buy Coding for Change Program, and Connect Home, which we're all here today to hear more about. She also oversees the efforts of Everyone's On, Everyone On's, excuse me, Corporate Advisory Board and National Advisory Council on Educational Technology. Next, I'd like to thank Capital One for sponsoring NHC's webinar series. Any opinions or errors, however, are ours alone. For those of you new to NHC, the National Housing Conference is committed to connecting the housing community with the resources you need to move housing forward. One area where NHC has been engaged with the field to discover best practices and challenges, as well as how to engage in advocacy effectively at the federal level, is broadband in affordable housing. NHC convened a connectivity working group, and with this group of policymakers and practitioners drafted research, policy recommendations, and case studies on broadband in affordable housing. And all of those resources are available on our website, as is a March webinar that we hosted just this year with Cuyahoga County Metropolitan Housing Authority and Boulder Housing Partners on their broadband efforts. So do check those out if you have an interest. We are hosting today's webinar to share information about HUD's Connect Home program and its planned expansion. Amber Petty, with everyone on, will explain plans for the expansion. And after her presentation, we will have some Q&A. However, please feel free to send your questions throughout the presentation as they come to you. And a few logistical details. First, we are recording today's presentation. And an archived copy of the webinar will be made available on our website, www.nhc.org. Once the recording is online, we'll send a link to everyone who registered. Barring any challenges on our end, we should have this posted and email sent out within the next 48 hours. And please note that all of your lines are muted in order to ensure clear sound quality for everyone. Again, we'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation, but if you have a question, please submit it through the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll do our best to address it during the Q&A period. If we're unable to get to your question, we will be sharing contact information, so you can follow up with Amber uh, specifically with questions if you need to. Finally, on the topic of technical difficulties. While we hope the webinar runs smoothly for everyone, we are aware this doesn't always happen. If you run into any technical difficulties, please use the Help menu at the top of the GoToWebinar control panel to locate technical support. If that doesn't work, please visit the GoToWebinar support website, and you can see the URL on your screen. Before turning the presentation over to Amber, I did want to share a few points that highlight the importance of having a home internet connection. 80% of students need inter internet access to complete homework assignments, 90% of job applications are online, and job seekers with at-home internet find employment on average seven weeks faster. Communities are exploring how programs like Skype and Fa Google FaceTime, not Google, Fa Apple FaceTime, sorry, <laughs> can be used for things like virtual home visits between social workers and families with young children. This is really um, potentially transformative because it gives social workers the ability to serve more families, to do more frequent visits at a lower cost. My next point is around FAFSA, the Free Application for Financial Student Aid, because it is moving online. For anyone who's had the joy of completing this, it is not a quick <laughs> or simple process. 
So being able to complete it at home as opposed to the library where you're time limited or the McDonald's parking lot, which is not ideal just to get the, the free public Wi-Fi, that kind of scenario shows you why home internet is so important. And lastly, actually applying for affordable housing is moving online. The city of San Francisco just launched this recently. So again, being able to complete your application in the privacy of your own home where you have access to all of your necessary documents is really important. So low-income families need and deserve more than a smartphone connection. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Amber. Give us one second. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for the introduction, and thank you to National Housing Conference for hosting us. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, good afternoon to the folks on the East Coast. Good morning to the folks on the West Coast. Um, as she mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about Connect Home and particularly its expansion to Connect Home Nation um, and how communities that are interested can join in the next cohort. Um, but before we get started, I'll give you a little bit more detail on everyone on at who we are and what we do. Um, so everyone on, we are a national nonprofit that began in, in 2013, and our goal is to close the digital divide in the United States. Um, we know that in the United States, one in five Americans does not have access to a home internet subscription. Um, so that's about 63 million Americans who are unconnected to today's digital society. Um, so we help to, to close that gap in three ways, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more in detail later on, but we'll give you an overview now. Um, one is affordable home internet access. Um, through our website, we're able to kind of create a listserv that lets uh, consumers compare affordable internet offers near them. Um, the other is affordable devices, so making sure you have something to connect with. Um, and the third is training. Um, so how do you find out which training sites are near you or what, what organizations near you are offering, whether it's workforce development or educational? Um, we, we try to help find those as well. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about all three legs of that digital inclusion stool. I just, I just went over there, um, but wanted to give that overview on what our organization does. So Connect Home. Connect Home began as a pilot program, actually under the leadership of, of Secretary Castro um, at the Department of Housing. Um, and its main goal was the same as everyone on. How do we close the digital divide, particularly in public housing, um, and for our pilot program, we actually had a focus on K-12 families. Um, we were really excited to do this. We were looking to, uh, how do we change the Department of Housing into the Department of Opportunity? Um, so how do we put together programming um, and resources that, that help to impact um, all of those transformative uh, areas of our lives where technology is now integrated? So job searches, telemedicine, online banking, even education, you know, how do we help those families to step out of generational poverty? So we, we began, we put out an RFP asking communities to raise, raise their hand um, and say, I want to participate in this. I'm excited about doing this work. So we ended up with 28 pilot communities um, all across the U United States. Um, and we call them communities because we will accept um, either cities, counties. Um, we had a tribal nation in our first pilot pilot. Uh, program. Um, so we wanted to really be inclusive of all areas where there was geographic diversity um, or even size diversity, um, which is something we hope to do in the next cohort as well. Um, but these 28 pilot communities raised their hands and they began the work of how do I integrate digital inclusion into my resident services. Um, so they've done amazing work over the last two years and it's really a testament to kind of uh, the folks who raised their hand and their dedication to what we've been able to accomplish so far. Um, so what have we accomplished? So Connect Home to date has connected over 20,000 households, um, which averages up to about 41,000 individuals. Um, so we're very excited about that um, and looking to do, definitely do more in the future. Um, I have a, a quick success story here um, from one of our residents, but how, how much of an impact that we're having on their lives, where she talks about the fact that having home internet allows her, her students to do his high school homework to apply for FAFSA just like Rebecca talked about, and even her younger grandchildren to be able to access, you know, 
educational content from home. Um, so those are the types of, of stories that we hear from all over the nation in our 28 pilot communities. Um, and that's the type of impact that's ultimately our goal in, in putting this program together. So that being said, we said we, we've done great work over the, over the last two years. What do we, what do we want to do moving forward? Um, so our two questions were, how do we sustain the great work that Connect Home has already achieved? How do we gather together the best practices and the models that we've been able to test out? Um, and then how do we grow the initiative from a pilot to a national movement? Uh, so the answer to that was the creation of Connect Home Nation, uh, which we launched uh, in late May. Um, so we were moving from a model where, you know, HUD's pilot program was really the 28 communities and it was a three-year pilot to learn what are the best practices um, of digital inclusion to this three-year program which moved under everyone on's uh, kind of day-to-day -day management. Um, and our goal for that, that, um, that program is to reach 100 new communities by 2020. And we believe that by reaching those new communities, we'll be able to impact the lives of 350,000 residents over the next three years. So we're very excited about that. So I want to talk a little bit more about what, what do Connect Home communities get when they enroll, um, which is one of the major questions I get all the time. Uh, so I want to go through a, a few of the top features that are available. This is not an expansive, um, all-inclusive list, but it does give a, a, a pretty good overview. Um, so the first is the Online Resource Center, and this is something we are currently building and that we'll be launching on July 17th. So this is one place where communities can come to see kind of their status. Um, can I come to talk to other communities who are in my cohort? Maybe I want to talk to a pilot community who's done um, some great work in a, in a similar model that I'm trying to replicate. Um, it's a place where you'll be able to find the stakeholder commitments um, and information on best practices. Uh, self-guided tutorials, all of that will be housed in one place where you can log in and check, you know, where am I, where am I going with this? Uh, I need some help on this. I can reach out to a staff member at Everyone On to say, hey, do you have a minute to talk about this idea that I'm throwing around? So we really want it to be a one-stop shop for your digital inclusion work under Connect Home Nation. Um, the second is webinars and technical assistance. Um, so as I said, we've put together quite an expansive list of best practices over the last two years. Um, we've put together a Connect Home playbook with the help, with the help of HUD um, that was, was pretty expensive, about 82 pages of, of different chapters on how do I begin with connectivity or devices. But we recognize that technology is a field that is constantly changing. So we don't only want to give you what we've learned over the last two years. We want to become a place for thought leadership. So we want to be up with the times on new technologies, new opportunities that are coming out, having guest speakers come and talk to you guys, um, and even showcasing communities who have done really innovative things and giving you guys a platform to share your knowledge with the other members of Connect Home Nation. The third are regional summits. Um, so every year we have a summit here in DC for all Connect Home communities, and now we'll include Connect Home Nation communities. Uh, however, we want to give you guys an opportunity to talk to other uh, housing providers and communities in your region, um, recognizing that every region isn't going to be the same. Um, so communities, as I, as I like to say, aren't always apples to apples. You know, New York City is not going to experience the same challenges that maybe a Choctaw Nation in Oklahoma is. So we really want to give you guys a regional opportunity to talk through, you know, I'm dealing with the same providers, maybe the same terrain that you guys are dealing with. Let's talk through how we've overcome them. Um, so we'll be working with local partners to host those summits um, over the course of the next three years. And the fourth and final um, kind of uh, feature that I want to go over is access to mentorship. Um, so I mentioned those 28 pilot communities and the great work they've done. Um, we will have a mentorship program where if you're looking to get, you know, some knowledge from, from their experiences, um, whether it be with a particular stakeholder or with a particular um, target demographic and how they have done resident engagement, that will be an opportunity for you guys to talk one-on-one -on -one with those uh, communities who have been in the program for over one year. And I should also mention that if you're accepted to Connect Home Nation, once you reach the one-year mark, you'll be able to opt into mentorship if you choose to do so. So I wanted to, to spend a minute talking about our stakeholders. Um, so at the beginning of the webinar, I talked a little bit about the three legs of the stool, 
which are connectivity, devices, and training. Um, so I wanted to talk through a, a few of the partnerships we have that are helping to bring those tools to our communities. Um, so you'll see them listed here. There are internet service providers. Um, there are training providers who are helping to provide resources and training to PHA staff, um, and some that are providing resources directly to residents to help build capacity on the ground. And we also have a lot of online content partnerships. Um, so those are the ABC Mouses or the Common Sense Medias or College Boards of the World who are bringing their content to students living in public housing for free, um, helping them to increase their educational attainment as they go through the process of signing up for whether it be secondary education or um, simply doing uh, reading training with your younger students. So I'm going to give a brief uh, timeline that kind of goes through what does the next six months look like for a Connect Home Nation uh, community. So as I mentioned, in July, we'll be launching our website, connecthomenation.org, um, as well as the application. That will be coming out July 17th, so just over a week and a half from now. Um, so we will be uh, having that application period open until July 30th. Um, and right now, you guys, after the webinar, we will share the frequently asked questions. And I'll go over a few uh, key elements of the application now so you guys can begin working on it um, ahead of time. So in August, we will announce w new communities. We'll be accepting 30 communities this year. Um, August 15th, we'll have a welcome webinar for those communities who were um, selected. Uh, TBD on the date, but sometime in October, possibly November, we'll be having our Connect Home Nation Summit. Um, so this is the event I talked about before, where all communities, whether they were pilot communities or are members of the new cohort, uh, will be invited here to DC to uh, kind of uh, break bread, hear about best practices. Uh, we'll have some guest speakers. We'll have the stakeholders. It'll all be in one place to kind of get you guys started on the path to uh, in implementing Connect Home on the ground. Um, in November, selected communities will be expected to host their first local convening. Um, this is an opportunity for you to not only talk to the national contacts that those stakeholders I talked about, um, but the local contacts they put you in touch with. Invite them to the table and go over, here's what we hope to achieve this year. Let's talk about how we plan to go about doing it. Um, Connect Home is not a program that's done in silos. It's done by committee. Um, so we really are here to bring you those partnerships that help you to be successful on the ground. Um, and then in December, your first progress report will be done will be due. Um, so we'll hope to hear a little bit more about how the local convening went. Um, you guys to create a project plan and tell us, you know, here are my goals for the next six months and how I plan to achieve them. And for us to be able to give you feedback um, and best practices based on that, that progress report. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the application. Um, I want to go over three key elements of the application. There'll be other questions um, available as well, but I think these are probably the most important um, so the first is a letter of commitment signed by both the housing provider lead um, and the city municipal or tribal lead. Um, Connect Home is a program that involves both a lead at the PHA and the city or the municipality's government. Um, and that's a really important partnership to have. Uh, we have found it to be instrumental in not only creating buy-in with the city government, but also uh, having a backup contact uh, for when, you know, certain issues may come up that, that require a city's um, input. Um, and, and I should say, in, in our communities, we've seen a variety of different leadership models. You know, some, the city is the lead. They're taking full charge of it. It's in the mayor's plan, um, and they're, they're the go-to contact. And other, the PHA is taking lead, and the city's just there to support. But having both of those parties at the table is crucial to the success of the program. So we will expect you guys to have them sign a letter of commitment saying that they support your application um, to Connect Home Nation. The second point um, is about place-based initiatives and digital inclusion campaigns. So we will have a section where we ask you, tell us about some of the initiatives you've already participated in and the successes you've seen. Um, if you haven't participated in a place-based initiative, um, feel free to tell us any digital inclusion campaigns that you've done, any work that you've already began in terms of helping your residents to get connected to the internet or tech, uh, technology training. Um, and we really want to hear more about, you know, the successes and the failures, any partners you've worked with, just to give us a sense of, okay, here's the, 
baseline that a community is coming in with. Um, and the third point is kind of an open question, um, and it's meant to be purposely vague. Uh, so we want to give you an opportunity to share with us anything you think we might need to know while evaluating your application. Um, and I'll give you an example of what this could be. Uh, so of our 28 communities, I would say there were probably three communities that when we started, we did not have a provider that was covering that community, meaning they didn't even have an internet service option. Uh, I say this to say there is not a roadblock that can keep you out of this program. The roadblock would be if you don't tell us um, the context of what's happening on the ground or how you plan to overcome it, or even if you have ideas about how to overcome it. Please share as much context as possible, um, because even though they didn't have a provider, they still got in. And I'm happy to say now all 28 communities have providers. Um, so there's not really an obstacle we can't overcome together um, or that we're not willing to work with you to overcome. But you have to give us as much information as possible on the front end for us to evaluate properly. So really quickly, I wanted to kind of go through the top questions that come up um, in our FAQ. And I think they're the ones that I've heard uh, most often uh, so far since we made the announcement. So which kinds of housing providers are eligible to join Connect Home? Or Connect Home Nation, rather. Um, so we will accept uh, public housing authorities, uh, private developers who participate in multifamily uh, style housing, housing, as well as Section 8 housing providers. All are eligible and encouraged to apply, as well as tribal communities. I'm sorry, that was uh, omitted here, uh, but mentioned earlier. We are accepting tribal communities applications and really encourage you guys to apply. Will Connect Home Nation accept multiple applications from one geography? Um, so meaning, uh, will we accept multiple applications from a particular city, county, uh, or tribal nation if there are different groups who apply? Uh, we will not accept multiple applications from, multiple ge from one geography. Um, good example of that would be, uh, I'll just use a town, like if Boise was applying and to uh, the housing authority and a private developer applied. Uh, we would not accept multiple applications from one community. And the reason being is we want to reach 100 unique communities by 2020. And we really want to make sure that we're having geographic diversity and not kind of stacking the deck. Um, with that being said, one thing we would definitely be open to is whether or not a community wanted to form a coalition. So whether or not a PHA and a, and a private developer want to come together to, form, to apply as one, that's definitely permissible. And we would love to see that application come in. Um, one thing I'll say about our current communities is many of them decided after they had already attacked public housing that they wanted to expand to multifamily and work with um, their partners in the multifamily space. So that's definitely a possibility and one we encourage. And lastly, can I apply for more than one geography? Um, so you can, uh, meaning a county could provide that, that covers multiple towns um, or a state could apply. Uh, However, I do want to mention that you do need to meet the application requirement for each geography. So if it's a county, the county manager and the, the county head of housing need to be the leads that um, sign the letter of commitment. If it's a state, it needs to be the governor's office that signs. Um, and if it's a private housing developer that covers uh, multiple regions, let's say I cover, um, I don't know, Roanoke as well as the neighboring towns, we do need a, a letter of commitment or a contact person for each of the town's leaderships. Um, that's very crucial and, and it's one that we believe is uh, necessary for applications. So with that being said, I realize I just talked a, a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm down to open it up for questions, uh, Rebecca. Thanks guys. Thanks, Amber. We will dive into some questions. Before I do that, I do want to hit a couple quick things for folks. One is uh, we will share Amber's presentation and the frequently asked questions that she mentioned uh, through a follow-up email to all the webinar registrants. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. And Tina Dudley wanted to let me know that the Connect Home convening that Amber mentioned has been scheduled. It'll be October 31st and November 1st. And our first question, Amber, was, if, is AT&T a stakeholder in the um, effort? Yes. Uh, so AT&T is a stakeholder for Connect Home Nation, and they do offer their low-cost um, 
internet offers uh, called the Access Program by AT&T in all of their, across their entire footprint. Great. And then how, we have a question about local internet service providers, so, um, and how they can join. So maybe you could talk about that a little bit. So maybe not the, the big Comcast AT&Ts of the world, but smaller businesses. Yes. Um, so that's actually a really good point that I, I failed to mention. So I want to say that we will only be allowing in 30 communities. However, we will be open sourcing most of our learning. We recognize that you know, many, more, many more than 30 want to do this work. Um, and we don't want to, to be inclu uh, exclusive in any manner. So there will be a public resources page um, where any community can come and learn more about the stakeholders who have gone footprint wide, so like AT&T. Um, you don't have to be in Connect Home to take advantage of the AT&T by access, the access by AT&T program. Um, and there are many other stakeholders who have made that same pledge that they're opening it to their entire footprint or the ent entirety of the United States. Um, so in terms of local providers, uh, we definitely will accept applications to join that public resources page. And particularly if there is a Connect Home community that they're covering, we definitely would welcome them joining Connect Home as a stakeholder to, sponsor, to support that community. Um, that's, that's the majority of the work we do. So many of our, our original pilot communities have a local provider that they're working with who's not necessarily a national partner for Connect Home Nation, but they are a local partner. Um, so those types of, of kind of digital inclusion matchmaking, if you will, are definitely possible and encouraged. Um, so I would encourage um, that local provider to reach out to us at Connect Home Nation at everyoneon.org to get started. Great, that was a really thorough uh, response. Our next question um, I think is a good one about now that we're in a new administration and a new Congress, are you seeing or concerned about any impacts around continuing the Connect Home program under the the Trump administration and Republican Congress? That's a, a great question. So um, at the time, I have not seen any inclination um, that the administration is not in support of the Connect Home program. However, uh, moving forward, since the Connect Home Nation program is under everyone on and we are not federally funded, um, we really don't have uh, any risk assessment there with uh, funding being pooled or support being pooled. Um, and I should mention HUD has been uh, a constant partner of ours and really dedicated to our mission. Um, so I don't see anticipate any problems moving forward. Great. So lots of questions coming in. Give me just one second to review them. Through the Connect Home program, are participants also connected with stakeholders who can help with the device issue, or, or what's kind of the, the focus there for participants around helping residents get low-cost or free devices? Yes, so we do focus on devices as well. Um, as of yet, we don't have a national device strategy. It's been more of the local kind of matchmaking that I talked about in the previous question. So we do have a few networks of refurbishers who are uh, partnering with Connect Home in the specific pilot, uh, pilot communities. And moving forward, we're looking to add to that. So we definitely, uh, no matter where you are, probably have a refurbisher within range who's, who's willing to work with you guys to find affordable devices for your residents. Great. And then a couple kind of logistical questions about communities that might be interested in applying. Um, and I'll just run through the three that we got. Okay. Will you make either a successful application, maybe from the first uh, group from 2015 available, or kind of a model or a template for folks? Um, also asking about a list of current communities, which is on the Connect Home uh, website, actually, and then contact information for current communities if folks want to reach out, ask questions, that kind of thing. Yeah, so let me um, tackle the first one. Uh, unfortunately, for the first cohort, applications actually ran through uh, HUD directly. Um, so I don't have uh, 
an example of those applications. Uh, but I will be creating kind of a sample letter of commitment. Um, there will be some guiding text in each question to kind of get you guys started um, and a few examples of, for example, place-based initiatives that we're, we're looking at. Um, so there'll definitely be uh, some guidance along the application which should help you guys to fill it out. Um, as far as the pilot communities that she mentioned, they are listed on the, uh, on the Connect Home website as well as in this um, PowerPoint which will be available to you guys after the webinar. Um, as far as contact information, uh, it's really on the discretion of the pilot community whether or not they want to be contacted. Um, I don't an anticipate that many of them would turn down an opportunity to talk to a prospective community, um, but if you guys wouldn't mind reaching out to me so I can reach out to them and ask if they would be willing to chat, that would be great. Great. And then a question going back to um, kind of that key application piece that you mentioned about having not just the housing lead but also the local government lead. If for instance, you were a multifamily private developer with properties with project-based Section 8 in a city and then the three surrounding counties. Could A, the developer act as the housing lead, and B, would the local commitment need to be the city mayor and the three different county managers? Uh, so for the first question, yes, the, the private developer can act as the housing lead. That's absolutely acceptable. Um, and yes, they would need um, a contact from each of the municipalities. Um, so the, the mayor's office and the three, three counties would need to sign off on the letter. It doesn't have to be three specific letters, um, but we would need a contact at each of those as you're planning to implement in each of those geographies. Great. And then if we've got some organizations on the webinar interested in Connect Home and Connect Home Nation that are not housing providers, but they are nonprofits either providing training or devising, um, or devices, excuse me. How can they get involved? Can they participate in the convening um, if they want to help communities with those pieces? Absolutely. So I'll direct them to everyoneon.org um, slash connect home. Sorry, I'm going to find the exact uh, URL for you here. Um, but if you visit everyoneon.org, um, and click the Connect Home tab, you should see a drop-down menu, and one will be non-ISP stakeholder application. Um, if you guys could fill out the application, it gives us a little bit of information about um, what geographies you serve and what you guys are bringing to the table. We definitely want to have as many stakeholders as, as possible. Uh, every, every little partnership helps here. I'm glad you mentioned partnerships because we've got a couple other questions that um, I will answer and then of course please chime in as you're the expert. But um, mm -hmm. a question about what residents receive in terms of internet access and devices and also what kind of funding is available. So the reason partnerships are so important is because unfortunately there is not a direct monetary award to connect home uh, participating communities. They do receive access to these stakeholders who have made commitments about different things. So every community's um, every community looks different in what they are achieving under Connect Home. They all have goals that they are actively working to meet, um, and I can give you a couple of examples of how the Connect Home has kind of sparked a lot of progress for places. The Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority is exploring line of sight technology and partnering with a local hospital and some other partners and a small local internet service provider. And again, it's not serving all of its, its properties, but it is, it is serving seven. And those tenants, those residents will have, I believe it's free internet access, at least right now. Um, so that's, and that all came about especially getting access to training and devices to really make that effort robust through Connect Home. Um, and then the DC Housing Authority, because of the local leadership that was part of the effort, which is why it's so important, they were able to leverage the DC Municipal Wi-Fi Network. So the DC government provides Wi-Fi to all of its local government offices, including public housing offices. So they were able to amplify the signal in those places where there were developments and get residents free access that way. Again, it's not serving everyone, but it is 
a significant step in that direction. Um, again, with access to devices and training through Connect Home, but also help negotiating with providers and, and building relationships with ISPs. Uh, so I will stop there and let Amber chime in as well. Yeah, no, I think that was a very thorough answer. I'll just add that um, while we do not have funding available directly for Connect Home Nation communities, um, we do have a lot of resources on how you guys can find funding. Um, we recognize that's a challenge for folks, especially um, for folks who are looking to provide access for free for their residents. Um, so we've been able to kind of negotiate and help with uh, funding for many of our communities, whether it be to, uh, to provide service, to provide devices for residents, or to provide programming like um, hosting a camp for, for students or something like that. Um, so I'll say while we do not directly have funding at the time, um, please, that, that shouldn't discourage anyone, any one of our Connect Home Nation communities from reaching out and saying, yeah, here's my idea and what I need. Let's work through how we can get there. Great, I'm glad you mentioned that about resources to help with applying for funding. Um, question about expanding a coalition. So let's say a community applies, they're accepted into this cohort, can they expand to other communities um, after the fact? That's a fantastic question, and yes, you can. Um, so I, as I mentioned, the pilot communities, many of which after the first year said, hey, we're ready to move to uh, not only directing our efforts towards public housing residents, but we want to work with multifamily as well as Section 8. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. Um, after the first year, we will ask you to create a project plan for year two. Basically, every year you have to do that. Um, and you would just need to add that information into your project plan. Great. And then you touched on this question a little bit in your presentation, but if you could elaborate on for the couple of communities that were in the first round of Connect Home who didn't have a local um, internet provider, how, how was that solved and communities can, in a similar situation, should still think about applying in this round, question mark? Yes. Um, so well. for, our, for our communities who didn't have a provider, uh, it wasn't solved overnight. It was kind of finding out what the local landscape landscape allowed. Um, it was particularly particularly in our rural markets um, where like a Choctaw Nation or an Albany, Georgia, uh, where we, we kind of had to, to work hard on the local partnership side. Um, so, and that convening I talked about was really important to bringing people to the table and seeing, okay, what's the coverage area here? What can we do in terms of low cost offers? Um, so, uh, to answer this, the second point of your, your question, uh, one thing I'm looking for in the application is if you're in a rural market where, you know, none of the national providers exist, please tell us who the local providers are, if you've had interactions with them before and trying to create a low-cost offer. Um, even if you have a municipal government that does um, kind of municipal broadband, um, similar to like a Wilson, North Carolina, or a Chattanooga, um, please give us that context because we, we definitely will work with you to find a solution, we just have to know ahead of time. That's really helpful. Or if you yourself are looking to develop your own municipal broadband or explore any of the technologies we talked about, like Cuyahoga or DC, please tell us that as well. We've got a couple more really great questions coming in. Um, the first being, what are housing providers and their local communities committing to, if you could kind of of get into that a little more specifically, what are their benchmark goals, um, that kind of thing. Yep, hold on one second, I'm just going to pull up the FAQ. Um, but so benchmark goals are for the first year, uh, your goal will be to ensure that 35% of all of your residents are connected. Um, and that's because the first year is really about getting your feet wet. We recognize that not many people have done this before, many of you are new to this. Um, and it'll be about partnership development. Um, from there, the percent will go up 15% per year. Um, so second year, it'll be 50%. Third year, 65%. Fourth year, 80%. Um, and up to 100 from there. Um, so I can read to you guys what uh, is required of communities to join. Um, so one is assigning that dedicated staff from the housing provider 
to serve as the Connect Home Nation lead. Um, so there will be one point of contact for Connect Home Nation's national staff here at Everyone On to talk through what's going on on the ground. Um, joint letter of participation from the housing provider and the city. Working towards that yearly internet adoption goal I talked about, we will also have a device and training goal for you. Um, so you're committing to quarterly internal progress reports. So these are reports that just come to the Connect Home Nation national staff. They're not public, but we do want to know what's going on on the ground. Um, and then annual public progress updates. So at the end of year one, we will publicly put out the data about how many people we were able to connect towards our goals. Um, and that's a great place for you guys to kind of brag about your success. Um, we'll definitely showcase new technologies that have been used, innovative solutions, things like that. Um, you're committing to regional and national summit attendance and then semi-annual success stories. So we really love to hear about the residents who are being affected by these programs. Um, and, and we'd love to have you guys help in, in showcasing a few of your residents who have been able to uh, access the internet or uh, receive help through training through the program. So those are the kind of seven uh, things you're committing to. Great, that's really helpful, Amber. Our next uh, other, I think, really great question for folks is, if you, if you and everyone on have advice for nonprofits who might want to work with their housing lead or a housing provider and the local government in their community to encourage them to apply and how they can kind of make the case for getting involved in this effort. That's a great question. Um, we have several resources that I think could be useful for that. Um, none are directly uh, tackling that exact question of how do I persuade my community to join. Um, however, I would encourage you guys to, to look through uh, the Connect Home Playbook, which I can share with Rebecca to share with participants after the webinar, um, as well as on our, on our everyoneon.org website, we have a broadband adoption toolkit that kind of talks through the benefits of digital inclusion uh, as well as um, some starter things uh, for communities who have never done this before. So how do I host an enrollment event? What does resident engagement look like? What are the steps I would need to go through to, to even get started? I think those two resources might be particularly helpful in, in persuading. Great. Thank you. And then a couple more logistical questions about the application. One, um, for a private nonprofit multifamily housing developer who has low-income housing tax credits, are they eligible to participate in Connect Home Nation? And I think that the answer is that depends. If you have a development with project-based vouchers or project-based Section 8 um, or even um, local housing choice vouchers in some fashion, uh, you could be eligible. But this, the Connect Home is specifically around HUD subsidized housing, so it's just the tax credit alone may not be enough for eligibility. Yeah, I think you capture that exactly right. Um, we are looking at HUD assisted housing. So if you do have any of those project based voucher units, you would be eligible. Um, however, if it's just low income tax credit, um, unfortunately, in this first year, they, they will not be eligible to apply. Um, and I should mention, uh, we definitely will look at, you know, whether or not we want to open uh, eligibility in years future. Great. So more logistical questions. For a regional public housing agency, should they get commitment letters from all of the local jurisdictions represented in their region? Um, that is a great question, uh, but a question I think that needs a little more context. If it's the regional office um, for HUD, then uh, Probably not. They would just need the, the regional sign-off. Um, if it's just a, a regional housing authority that covers multiple counties, um, then yes. And I would say, uh, while it may look daunting, one way to look at it might be do the lowest common denominator. So if you're covering multiple counties, having a sign-off from the county uh, would be acceptable. So it may not be necessary for you to go to each individual town to get leadership. Um, if the county signs off on behalf of, of their entire footprint, that's fine. That's helpful. And then um, will the AmeriCorps VISTA program continue supporting Connect Home Nation? 
So uh, as of right now, we do have AmeriCorps Vistas who are available to uh, our communities. I believe uh, somewhere around 11 to 15 of them have already received their Vista who's working on this Connect Home work. Um, moving forward, I am not sure whether or not the, the program will continue. We definitely want to continue the partnership and we'll work to, um, but that's something that's dictated by um, their availability as well as the new administration. Right. Uh, I will point out for folks that President Trump's proposed FY18 budget did propose eliminating uh, the AmeriCorps program, so just something to be aware of, uh, unfortunately. Are pilot communities that are part, already part of the effort, um, will they automatically stay a part of Connect Home or do they need to reapply? That's a good question. They will not need to reapply. They can simply opt in. Um, to connect home nation that we grandfathered in. And then is there a minimum number of either housing units or residents that would constitute a qualified community thinking about a multifamily developer with one property with project based section eight, for example? Um, yes. Uh, so we would be probably looking at uh, communities to reach at least uh, a thousand residents. Um, so not necessarily units, but residents. Got it. And then any examples you could speak to around um, place-based initiatives that other communities have implemented? That's somewhat of a difficult question, but maybe if there's a couple really strong um, Connect Home jurisdictions and how they're doing this work, you could answer it that way maybe. Yeah, so some of the, the overlap we've had with our communities and place-based initiatives have been, um, some of them have been promise zones, um, some of them have been choice neighborhood, choice neighborhoods, strong cities, strong communities, um, as well as some who are particularly active in Jobs Plus. Um, so I think those are four examples of the types of place-based initiatives where if you've participated in them, please tell us about your experiences there and the work you've been able to do. Does that answer, answer the question? Yes. No, that's great. Um, I'm not seeing more questions come in. We'll give folks a couple of minutes just in case anything else comes top of mind. Again, the recording will be made available of the webinar and we'll share a number of the resources, not just the slides, but the FAQs um, as well as the playbook for Connect Home for folks. Uh, so hopefully all of those will be useful. And then a question, so we just had two questions come in. One is, Will reporting periods be the same for Connect Home Nation as in Connect Home? Um, no. Uh, so I, our reporting periods will be uh, every quarter at the end of the quarter. So as I mentioned, December will be the first one. That'll be the end of Q4 for this year. Um, and then moving forward, it'll be the end of each quarter. So end of March, end of May. I mean, end of June. Yeah. So on and so forth. Um, and we'll try to keep them as uniform as possible so we may pick um, the third Thursday before the end of the quarter um, so that it's at the same time every every quarter. Um, and as I mentioned, that online resource center, uh, it will send you reminders to let you know where you should submit that report. Great. And then are any of the current Connect Home communities from New York, the New York State area? Yes. Um, so New York uh, is a Connect Home community. Um, NYCHA as well as uh, Mayor de Blasio's office are both uh, participating in Connect Home. And then um, just to reiterate for folks, because this question has come in in a couple different ways, but this is specifically about HUD subsidized housing. So this is public housing, this is Section 8 vouchers, either tenant-based or project-based. 
um, and then project-based rental assistance. So there are other funding streams at HUD, but they are not eligible um, for this particular program. Again, you can still, as a local government, if you've received HUD funds or your quasi-public agency, you could partner with your housing provider um, that would be eligible for Connect Home. And then um, maybe could you touch on, Amber, staff time in terms of one for the application, kind of how much time folks should be thinking about for that. And then if you do have, if you're accepted, you're eligible, you have designated staff who are leading your Connect Home effort, kind of what percentage of a full-time employee would be working on this? Uh, or a range may be more appropriate, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so to the, the question about the application, I don't anticipate it taking a long time. Um, there really won't be that many questions. Um, I think if you have your letter already in hand, um, the application might take you an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how much you decide, how much detail you decide to give, and I hope you guys will give a lot of detail um, for a really rich application. Um, as far as staff time, it really depends on the housing authority. Um, we recognize that many uh, folks who work in housing are kind of overworked, uh, don't have a lot of spare time. So the reason for those, those stakeholder partnerships are to help you guys implement the work. Um, so we hope that they will be of use to you guys in terms of capacity building, whether that be partnering with the local library to host the trainings um, and getting a, a schedule going where you guys can just do outreach to the residents to let them know about those opportunities. Um, those types of examples are definitely what we aim for. But I would say on average, um, the Connect Home lead is probably, it's heavier in the beginning uh, as you're first learning, but over time, maybe there's a 15 hours a month that's done directly on the work in terms of making sure that your you know, device partners are up to date on which housing projects you're, you're targeting or things like that. At a, at a certain point when you're bringing together your stakeholders, and forming your project plan, it becomes more of a coordination role for those local partners. Okay, great. I think that was really helpful. Um, and I will give folks one or two more minutes just in case there's any lingering questions, but I wanna go ahead and thank Amber so much for being with us today and sharing all of this really great information about the Connect Home expansion I think it's been really valuable and helpful for everyone on the webinar. Uh, so thank you so much for doing it. No problem. Thank you so much for hosting. And then before we close out, I just want to thank our sponsor again and thank all of you for joining us today and for sending us such great questions to really get at some of the details. So uh, look for a follow-up email from us with all of the resources mentioned. Uh, you saw my email address as well as Amber's. Please feel free to reach out with specific questions if we didn't get to them or they come to you later. And hopefully we'll see some of you applying for Connect Home Nation. Thanks, everyone.